Greetings. <laughs> we have to remember that if we're going to look at cities, because it's future cities, we have to think of regions. And I want you to especially notice this black blob here, which is capital iron and steel in Beijing. And we're going to see some transformations. This is 2003. Now we have 2020, and we see that overall, the number of industries has moved out of the city, and that's affecting the shipments in and out from different regions in China. So this city transformation is affecting the regions. Here we go to Shenyang, which is north of Beijing, and we see that they're looking at the Teshi area, which is an industrial area. They're building it out from the present industrial area in China. And uh, this is some plans that the pl city planners have done. Now, they took us out to what was supposed to be unused. They said, this is unused land. Well, I come from a farm, and I know this wasn't unused. This is farmland that they call unused so that they can develop it. And so they're putting in some roads in this area, which we're going to see in a minute. So here we see the roads going in, in this unused agricultural land. Being from a farm, I don't like my land called unused. but. That's what they do. And the buildings that they're putting up in this area, they're not putting up very many residential buildings. They're putting up a lot of industrial buildings uh, for the industries that are moving out. And they're building a subway so that they're not having the people move out to Teshi, but they're having the people stay where they are and then they will use a subway and bicycles and other means to get out to the area. Now we're back to Beijing, and this is the capital iron and steel area. We see the reservoirs that they've had. Now most of these buildings have been torn down, or in the process of being torn down. They're moving this whole plant, which is a really a small city in itself, up to another part of China. This is showing in the iron and steel. One of my uh, students took this picture in the actual plant before it was closed down. So that we see that there are some very important things that are happening through this, what is happening in the city, but that's affecting what is being transported in. Now this was Beijing in the 1980s, late 1980s. No cars, almost no cars. Uh, Bicyclists, this is near the Friendship Hotel, those of you who are acquainted with Beijing. Look at all the trees along this. Those trees were torn down and the street was widened. This is Beijing a couple of years ago. I took this picture from my hotel room right before the Olympics. And you see now there's huge amount of traffic in the city, lots of pollution. Those of you who've been there understand the pollution that is happening. This, but the transport into the city and out is passenger cars. Now we go across the country or across the ocean to Seattle. This is a coal gasification plant, the last coal gasification plant. Seattle has made that now into a museum piece so people can visit it there in the city. So you can do things with your old industrial sites and attract tourists into that area. This is in New York. This is the High Line, which just opened a few months ago, where they put in all sorts of vegetation. They have lots of visitors now up, because they can come up. It's on the old elevated. And so they can come up and get away from the noise and the uh, tra traffic down below. And this is at my institution, MIT. Take rainwater from the Stata building, from building 56, and put it into a reservoir in the um, down underneath and then they can have trees. They use it for flushing toilets. Now I read in the paper this morning that one third of the household water use in China is for flushing toilets. So think what you can do by saving rainwater and using that to flush toilets. So this is the important. Cities and the city transformation is affecting regions. It's affecting the ecology, it's affecting the environment. And we'll be able to discuss more of that uh, later when you come to my area over there.